All right, chapter, uh, well, I guess I won't call it a chapter, but um, today's lesson is a wrap-up on solving. Um, it does have one purpose with a small purpose added in. The main purpose is to show you how to finish up the problems that we've been working on for the past two weeks. The secondary purpose is to bring substitution and elimination back to your memory just briefly uh, before we move on to the next couple days where you'll review. Uh, let's just look at the types of problems you're going to see. Uh, given the system and a solution, finish the problem. So. It's worded just like it is off the computer because I got it directly off the computer. So if you remember, what we learned how to do was, ignoring this line here, what we learned how to do was to take this Y, plug this number in here, do some work, and we found X. The thing that I said was that we have to find the actual second number. So what do you do after you found X? Well, all you have to do in these problems, especially when there's a Y equals, is go to the Y equals problem and substitute 2 for X. So 7. I would write y equals 7x minus 1. This is not on your computer, but again, uh, I do need to see it on paper if you mess up. Uh, so you just turn your x into a 2. So 7 parentheses, just like you pr substitute a parentheses there, substitute a parentheses there. y equals 14 minus 1. Therefore, y equals 13. You type that answer in, you get it right. So some of you might say, well, what if I don't want to use that? You don't have to. 2x plus 3y equals 43. The bottom line is that you have to copy one of the two original questions and simply substitute. So with that being said, we now turn our x into a 2. You then do your multiplication. So 4 plus 3y equals 43. You then do your algebra. Since 3 is attached to y, we get rid of this 4 by subtracting it. and then look at this when you divide 39 by 3 guess what you still get 13 so it does not matter which one but you should know should note that whenever you see one that has a y equals using that you could probably even do in your head because if you look at it you would go 7 times 2 is 14 minus 1 is 13 you could finish it off and that would give you your answer so again finishing as I told you the other day finishing the question is easy the hard part is finding the first number so just quickly which some of you should do is recognize that there's a y equals and all you have to do is take this 6 plug it in here 2 times 6 is 12 12 minus 8 of course is 4 that would be your answer but officially if you were taking a test you would be expected to do this turn x into 6 12 minus 8 4 or again you could have taken this one here turn your x into 6 multiplied 7 times 6 to get 42 subtracted your 42 from both sides because that's what's not attached to y and then divided by 8 and notice that you still get y equals 4 now if your weakness is in solving I really can't help you with that part but like I said, at least you kind of see what's going on here and what we're doing. If you remember this system, this was the one where you had to use elimination, where we would multiply a top by 6, the bottom by 7. We'd do a whole bunch of work. We would find out y equals something. Well, here we are. And so again, once you see this question here today, it's giving you the fact that y equals 5. So that means you want to go to one of your original equations. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Because as you just saw, both of these systems have the same answer. So 7x minus 2y equals 25. Turn your y into 5. So 7x minus 2 to 5 equals 25. Turn that into your number, which is 7x minus 10 equals 25. And again, x is attached to 7. So you want to add 10 to both sides. And when you divide by 7, you get x equals 5. So again, your question is, what if I use the other one? Well, it doesn't matter. Put a y in for 5. That turns into 45. Subtract 45 because, again, 45 is not attached to x. Divide by 6, and x is 5. And again, you might be thinking when well, you're going really, really fast on your solving, but that's because solving was chapter 2. This is chapter 6. If you really have a problem with solving, feel free to contact me. I don't know if I can teach you how to solve because I don't know if uh, that's something that I should have to do. But again, if you take a picture of your work, 
and you show it to me, I can at least um, critique what you did, but you have to show me your work for that. And then the last one of these, before we move on to a quick review, again, same thing, given the system and the solution, finish the problem. By the way, you don't have to do, I know I'm doing these things two times, you do not have to do them twice. Once you find your number, type it in and move on. Again, you do not need to do the second one here. Just like here, if you chose that equation, you don't need to do the second one. Once you find the number, you are done. That is what you're there for. I am just trying to show you that it doesn't matter which one you pick. So I'll work this one out like I normally would, which is if y equals 4, find x. I usually just pick the top equation in general. And so I'm going to turn my y into a 4. So that's 4x minus 16 equals negative 12. That means I want to add 16 to both sides. Again, using your calculator, you should be able to do that to find out that this is 4, which means that then you end up dividing by 4, which means that x is 1, and you're done. Again, I don't need the second part. Once I get 1, type it in, get your answer, and that is it. Two quick review questions, because again, this is also on your homework, it's just to make sure. This is telling me to eliminate x to find y. If you remember your elimination, I need these two things to match. So this is the one where I multiply everything by 4, multiply everything here by 5, and I end up with 20x, 8y, and that is 56, 4 times 14. Again, you can use a calculator if you want to. This is 20x minus 45y, negative 50. Remember that the next thing you want to do is have these opposites, so that's why I switched my bottom row. This cancels. That makes 53y. This makes 106, which means then you divide by 53, getting y equals 2. That was elimination. That was the stuff I think that we did in our last lesson right before we uh, had the weekend. But again, if you're having issues with this, that doesn't mean you should quit for the rest of the year. This is just one thing that kind of pops up with it and will be done pretty much tomorrow. I'll be wrapping this up. So, um, But I need, to, I need you to see it because one of the first things you're going to be expected to do next year when you walk into class is to know how to do elimination, elimination substitution because I think that's pretty much where you'll start your um, lessons I believe something like that find the value of X this is not the same which is why I want to make sure we review this this is the one that has a Y equals which means this is the one where I am going to put this here this is substitution and so that's the one where you put 2x plus 3 you then swap your Y out for 6x minus 14 equals 18 you then distribute this 3 to get 2x plus 18x that'll be actually 42 You then combine your like terms, if you remember doing that, 20x minus 42 equals 18. And from there, you finish the problem out by doing what we've been taught to do. And that is it. So again, on this question, if you wanted to finish the whole thing, you take this 3 back up here. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 minus 14 is 4. You could finish the whole thing and be done. That's what tomorrow is about, which is why I need you to make sure you kind of see that today. So again, go ahead and go over to your Math XL and get the problems that you need. Please don't start conversations with me on, um, like I've gotten a whole lot of different things in terms of people wanting help. Um, I've heard, I've got private comments. I don't reply to them. I've gotten invited to Hangouts. I don't do that. You either text me or you email me. But outside of that, I do not really respond to anything else because any, any, whenever I get these messages, just like you, I'm living my life here, living a good life. Um, but I'm, I might be outside um, working on something in the yard. I might be inside working on music. Who knows? But whenever you give me these things, I have to come all the way back downstairs, find my computer, log in, and do all this crazy stuff. Whereas if you send me a text or you shoot me an email, I can grab my phone, I can look at it, I can see what's going on, I can reply wherever I am, and move on. 
so I really don't get to these as well as I should because that's whenever I have time to get back to the computer I might even be out somewhere who knows but if you text me or email me um, again with the pictures and on this I do need to see the picture of your work if you do it otherwise I will ask for the work but if you text me or email me I can respond immediately and go ahead and get to where or as soon as I can at least it'll be sooner than if it's a hangout or whatever but again just text me or email me and please let me know then I'm glad to help you but it needs to be in a format that's convenient so other than that have a good day check out your math excel good luck